What's up smart homers? My name's Aaron and in this video I want to show you how I built a rack for my network and smart home equipment. So this is my first ever rack and although I tried to future proof it for any devices that I may want later on down the road, the fact is there are some things that I wish I had done a little bit differently. If you stick around to the end I'll explain those. Also, I'm going to leave links to everything that I use in this build if you want to replicate this build or if you're interested in some of the components of the build. I started with a 19 inch wide by 18 inch deep wall rack from Nave Point. It has a 12U capacity, which just means 12 slots or 12 places for things to be mounted. Different rack mount devices take up different amounts of space, and each space is called a unit, so it's just referred to in that way. For example, I bought some shelves that are 2U shelves and some that are 1U shelves. A 2U shelf is a little bit taller and takes up two units of space or two slots. A 1U shelf just takes up one. The rack was pretty simple to put together and then mount to the wall, although I wish I had an extra set of hands because it was a bit heavy, and I do think I need to reinforce it a little bit because it seems to be able to flex a tiny bit with the swinging door. That leads me to my favorite feature of this rack, which is the swinging door. Since the front swings out, it allows you to access the backs of all your devices super easily, so you can connect cables, disconnect things, rearrange things, whatever you want to do. For supplying power to each of the devices in the rack, I got a 19 outlet rack mount surge protector with a single switch for all the outlets, and I've plugged that into a power monitoring outlet so I can see just how much juice I'm using. It has these little extensions for all the outlets, so you can actually fit all of your power bricks for all your devices. Some of my smart devices use 5 volt DC power, so I got this little USB charging station to handle those. As I mentioned before, I got some shelves, I actually got four of them. Two are 2U shelves, and they go almost all the way to the back of the rack and are two units high, of course. Then I have the 1U shelves, which don't go as far back and are only one unit high. The shelves are perforated, allowing for airflow, so you can set things like smart home hubs and NVRs on them, and there should be decent airflow. For my Ethernet devices, I went with this 24 port switch from TP-Link. Currently, I'm using a 16 port, so this should be a nice step up. I only have one PoE device right now, which is my Duo 3 from RioLink, but I went ahead and got this BV Tech 18 port switch anyway, because I'll probably want more PoE devices in the future, specifically PoE security cameras. An important factor in rack setup is cable management, and it's actually one of the hardest things for me. So I bought a few things that I thought would help. I bought a patch panel, which you can use with some keystone jacks to act as kind of a directional swap for all of your ethernet cables. The cables come out of the front of the rack, out of a switch, and then they get redirected right back into it. This panel comes with an attached cable management crossbar, which sits behind the patch panel and allows cables to be zip tied to it in a very orderly way. This really tidies things up, and I also got some shorter patch cables of different lengths to organize the cables on the front of the rack. Additionally, I got these little cable management clips with adhesive on the back that allowed me to organize the cables inside the rack. Since this is my first rack, I really didn't come up with a plan and then just go ahead and build it. I kind of built it as I went along, returning some things on Amazon and getting different things and kind of piecemealing it together till I got what I thought was a good setup. Because of that, you might see some footage that shows components that aren't in my final build and that's the reason why. One of the more annoying things with building these racks I found are the cage nuts, which are these little nuts that go into the slots on the front of the rack and help you to mount your equipment. They're kind of cumbersome to use and easy to drop, but there is a solution for it. Someone on Twitter actually tagged rack studs in one of my posts about this rack, and they reached out and sent me some rack studs. They seem to be either 3D printed or injection molded, but they're these little studs that attach to your rack. Then you can easily install whatever you're rack mounting by sliding it onto the studs and then screw the thumb screws on after. Once I had the whole rack set up the way I wanted, I then had to disconnect all my devices and then do my cable management. In a couple places, I actually used some custom length cables. And this was actually just an excuse for me to learn how to terminate my own cables. I got some white Cat 5E cable, some RJ45 pass-through connectors and a special crimp tool, and I went to town. It was actually a lot easier than I thought it would be, probably taking 10 minutes for my first connector, but I soon realized that's not what I wanted to do for a living, or even at all. It was a good excuse to learn the skill, but I wouldn't say that I'm proficient at it, but I'll leave links to all the tools I use if you're interested. Okay, so enough about how I built it now, and let me show you what's in it in its final state. Although, that's not really true, because is your rack ever in its final state? Okay, so down in the bottom of the rack here, I actually have a 2U shelf, 
And then I have this power supply that I mentioned, the 19 outlet power supply. I have this on a shelf for good reason, and that's because the back of the shelf is actually supporting all of the power bricks that are attached to the power supply's cables. Next, we have a 1U shelf, and that has most of my smart home hubs, but not all of them. It's got our SmartThings hub, and then we have our EcoWit hub that I showed in our EcoWit weather station video. I have the Acara hub, which I showed in their recent ceiling light video. And then I have my Zima board, which I'm going to talk about a little bit more in a second. Finally on that shelf, we have the Hubitat hub, which is just for testing like the SmartThings hub. I'm not really using that for anything in daily use. Okay, so the first thing on the next shelf is actually something that's not even available for you to get yet. And this is the TerraMaster D8 Hybrid. This portion of this video is sponsored by TerraMaster. The D8 Hybrid is a direct attached storage system that will be available soon on Kickstarter. It supports up to four HDDs and four M.2 NVMe SSDs for up to 128 terabytes of capacity. It's equipped with USB 3.2 Gen 2 for up to 10 gigabits per second of bandwidth, which allows for super seamless use in a NAS type system. It also supports RAID 0, RAID 1, JBOD, and single modes, so you can use it in various configurations for your data redundancy. It can also be used as a NAS storage expansion, as it's compatible with Mac, Windows, Linux, and other NAS systems. If you don't have a NAS system in mind, it's actually great for non-portable storage. The way I'm using it here is with my Zima board single board computer. In a previous video, I showed you how I put my Plex server on the Zima board. But with the D8 Hybrid, I can set up a proper storage system, using it as network attached storage as well as my Plex Media server. To start, I put two 4TB HDDs and a single 2TB NVMe drive in it and set it up in single mode. All I had to do then was connect it to my Windows PC to initialize the drives, and then I can connect it to my Zima board running Casa OS, and I was good to go. I can edit 4K videos off this thing with no issues, so I plan to actually make this my main media machine and move everything off of my old PC that it's currently on. The D8 Hybrid will be available soon on Kickstarter with a discount of up to 33% for backers starting at $199. Thanks to TerraMaster for sending me this unit and sponsoring this portion of the video. Moving on from the TerraMaster, we have a Raspberry Pi here in a special Pyron Man case from SunFounder, and that is running a test instance of Home Assistant. This test system is actually where I did a lot of my dashboard videos that you guys have really enjoyed, and I'm actually coming out with some more of them, so definitely get subscribed if you're not so you can see some more of those. Next, we have the Eufy Home Base, which has a hard drive inside it and actually stores local data from cameras outside. Actually, have four UFI cameras, and despite the scandal that they've kind of been a part of, I actually really like their cameras. All right, so up here we have the Home Assistant Blue, and this is actually one of my absolute favorite devices. This is the one I fell in love with Home Assistant using. I have all the dongles connected to it sticking out the back down into the rack, and they don't get tangled up there or caught, so they're in a pretty good spot. This thing has been rock solid since I got it, which was right around the time it was released, and it's been super nice. Next, we have the Reolink NVR, which they sent to me for a previous video, and that records all of my Reolink camera footage. I'm hoping to get some more PoE Reolink cameras in the future. Next, we have the patch panel that I mentioned with the Keystone couplers in there, and you can see all the patch cables that run from the TP-Link switch down to the patch cable. I wish there were some intermediate length cables rather than just the two lengths, but that's all I could find on Amazon. And again, I don't really want to make my own that are all these tiny little cables. So that's what I went with. Again, like I mentioned, we have the 24 port TP-Link switch up top and above that, the BV Tech PoE switch. Right now you don't see any PoE devices connected to that switch. And that's because I only have one in the house, but I do plan to expand and then I'll start using this switch. Again, you can see that most of these are mounted with rack studs. There's only one case where I didn't do that, but otherwise rack studs all the way. If we swing this rack open. You can kind of see how I've done some cable management where I use these clips to kind of manage the cables and it's not pretty, but it does get the job done. So that's pretty much it for the rack. Now there is something you may be noticing is glaringly missing and that is my modem and router for Wi-Fi. The fact is that I use the Google Nest mesh Wi-Fi system and in order to have good coverage in my house with the single router and the single access point, I actually have to have it not in this rack. Now I plan on replacing them because I can't stand the Google Nest Wi-Fi specifically because you have to use their app and that's literally it. So I'm looking for a good mesh Wi-Fi replacement. So if you know of a good replacement, leave a comment and let me know. 
You also may have noticed that I don't have a bunch of ethernet cables running up into a bunch of different rooms. And that's because this house was built in 1970 and that wasn't a thing to run ethernet everywhere. I would love someday to run ethernet to all the rooms, but unfortunately I don't think that's gonna happen in this house, but maybe if I build my own someday. Throughout this process, I've learned quite a bit. And if there's one thing I would change is probably to get a larger rack. Now, don't get me wrong, this rack is fine for most residential cases, but if I'm gonna expand my smart home, my test setups, or my studio at all, I really should get a rack a little bit bigger than this. As you can see, I've already filled it up. I could move the TerraMaster and I could rearrange some things, but it is pretty full. Another thing I'd change is using brush panels instead of patch panels. Honestly, I saw brush panels, I saw patch panels, I picked patch panels and I committed, and I kind of wish I had done brush panels, so it may be something I try in the future. In this process, I did learn how to terminate my own cables, which is a really cool skill to learn, but it is a bit time consuming when you're on a tight schedule. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing the setup and I look forward to lots of constructive criticism in the comments. If you see something I could have done better, subscribe and then let me know in the comments. And if you like what you saw, subscribe and then let me know in the comments. Don't forget that I've left links to all the components of this build in the description. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.